Good morning, everybody. It's Jim Feist and Kelso Sturgeon here in Las Vegas. The weather is starting to cool off a little bit, although I think we'll still be hitting some 100-degree uh, temperatures in the next couple days. Kelso, I know that your, uh, your football is not cooled off. You were red hot last week, and I know you have some big stuff coming up this weekend. You know, it's a very exciting weekend for me, and as I, I began studying the numbers when they came out, I realized that there's some real opportunities to uh, uh, make some big scores uh, this week. Uh, I'll just run down a brief menu of what I'm using this week. I'm using two college underdogs that actually grayed out with a 90% chance to win, as did Virginia Tech on Monday night and uh, releasing a two-team 60-unit blowout parlay, my college game of the week, and a wise guy shocker. And, you know, the one thing I want to explain about my rating system, I rate games from five to 400 units. So when I say that a game is 50 units or 75 units, it's far superior uh, to one that's 15 or whatever. Uh, and, and I just want the public to know that if you'd like to get my football plays for this weekend or tonight or tomorrow, you can get them on the Internet at KelsoSportsHandicapping.com or toll-free at 1-800-755-2255. And by the way, on that telephone number, 1-800-755-2255, I realize that I have had that same number for 19 years. Really? Wow. Yes. That's pretty awesome. Uh, Kelso, there's a, this is our first pro football game tonight that matters, the first regular season game. We've got the Super Bowl champion at home, Philadelphia Eagles. This game opened Philadelphia five and a half. And um, they're hosting Atlanta. Of course, Atlanta was the big... The big team in the in the league two years ago when they had the 28-3 lead at halftime over New England and blew it. But last year, they changed offensive coordinators because their offensive coordinator became the head coach in in uh, for the uh, the 49ers. Now, and as a result, Atlanta's offense went down about 10 points per game. Now this year, they're back. They're healthy. Philadelphia has a couple banged up players. Wentz is not playing, but the, the Super Bowl uh, MVP, Holes, is starting the game. Uh, Jeffrey's out for Philadelphia. That's that's a loss at the wide receiver position. But this game opened. I mean, this is amazing to talk about this. Philadelphia five and a half, and right now Atlanta is one. Now. I understand line movements, and I've been watching this for, like you, like a half a century. That's a six and a half point move, and, and I, I can't justify it. Can, well, can, yeah, it, it is rather stunning, but, you know, I've tracked this line that you have, and uh, it was five and a half. There was some feeling, I believe, in the uh, a bookmaking community that uh, Wentz might be back this week. He looks to me like if he gets back by mid-season, uh, uh, the uh, Eagles would be fortunate. And as soon as it was confirmed that Foles would start, that's when the line started coming down. And there's two basic questions in my mind in handicapping this game. Uh, first of all, what are we going to get from Foles? Is he going to be the same quarterback who was the most valuable player in last year's Super Bowl win, or is he going to be the quarterback that just kind of bumbled and fumbled his way through uh, the preseason? And uh, that, that, that certainly is a, a question that one hopes they could answer. And then you have the situation with uh, Atlanta, uh, which is uh, much more healthy right now than, than is Philadelphia. Here's a team that went 0-4 in the preseason, and I realize that we just can throw any preseason numbers out uh, and not even consider them. But one thing that disturbs me a little bit, 
uh, of that uh, uh, the Falcons is in those four losses during the preseason, they scored a grand total of 27 points. And uh, so I've got to address those two issues before I decide where to go. Well, not every game is bettable. You know, if, if I can't get a read on where the edge is, I just don't make a play. When this game opened up, the first line that I was able to bet was four. I took Atlanta plus four, and I sent it out to my clients. Now, here's the situation. Anybody that got the game and they were able to take four, I'm now t telling them to take Philadelphia at pick four plus one and just sit and watch the game and hope it lands in the middle somewhere. Because I can't justify the line movement. Philadelphia, across the board, they have probably the best offensive line in football. Maybe number two would be Atlanta or maybe Pittsburgh. Anyway, they're in the top three or four offensive lines. Both have good quarterbacks. Ryan is proven to be an excellent starting quarterback for a long time. And Foles has had his moments. And a couple programs where he left Philadelphia after his 27 touchdown and two interception season years ago, he didn't do very well. But he ended up in Los Angeles under Jeff Fisher and hardly anybody in the latter years that Jeff was in the league did very well. So I don't know if we could throw that out maybe. But then he comes well, back... It, I, I, go ahead, I'm sorry. He comes back to Philadelphia... And he's put under the gun in the playoffs after Wentz got hurt and did remarkably well. Foles plays well when they have a run-pass option. Um, they call them eight RPOs. And in the preseason, they played very vanilla. They didn't do anything to spark up or show much. You can throw the damn preseason out. Come on, guys. You go out there, and they're, they're, they're out there for 10, 15 plays. During the week, they're playing five, 600 plays. So you could throw the preseason numbers out. They mean nothing. And proof of that is the Cleveland Browns. They'll go 4-0 and last year in the, in the preseason and go 0-16 in the regular season. It means nothing. It depends on what the coaches want to accomplish and what they want to show. And in these cases, these two teams are Super Bowl contenders. So now you've got a six-and-a-half-point move on, against Philadelphia, who has an excellent defense, very difficult to score on them. You've got an offense in Atlanta who was down by 10 points per game last year under a new offensive coordinator. And you can't read anything on the preseason. I think this is a ridiculous line move. And if I didn't already send it out, and I'm telling you, this is free information for me. If I didn't already send it out, Atlanta plus four, I'd be sending out Philadelphia plus one. I can't do that because I can't be on both sides of the same game. But I think the people that are listening to this will understand you can't take four and then eventually <laughs> lay one. You just can't do that. Maybe in a college game you might get away with it, but not in the pros. Anyway... That's my thinking on the game. I know you have an opinion. I'd love to hear it. Well, you know, uh, I agree with everything that you said, and, and the preseason is absolutely deceiving because we never really get to see what a team uh, uh, is or their potential, how good or how bad they are, uh, because of this mix of players that uh, nobody can calculate. But you, you have a situation here, uh, and I'll throw a question at you. Uh, the line move is stunning, to say the least. And I think you made a valid point. Uh, you know, this is a perfect spot to go for the middle. And uh, uh, if I had uh, your bet, uh, plus four on the uh, uh, Falcons, I guarantee you I'd run right down to the nearest book and uh, 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 take the plus one on Philadelphia and sit back and pray. You know, you get 20 to one for your money if you hit the middle. Uh, the second issue here, and I uh, ask you this uh, out of curiosity. Now, the money has showed, obviously, for uh, 
Atlanta. Are you a follower or do you ignore that? Well, I don't follow general money uh, because a lot of times you get public money. I I know some big players. I've been around, you know, like you. I've been around a long time, so you know people that that are good at what they do. And there's a lot of people. There's a lot of handicappers, you know, these days that are pretty good at what they do. And there's a lot of young people have come in with new ideas, and and some of them are very valid. Uh, but in the old days, you know, you would you would be dealing with sharps that. A lot of them are gone now, but today there are still some very sharp players that are not public handicappers. You'll never know their names. I know them personally because I've had dinner with many of them, and I know what they're doing. And I know right now, if you have no money on this game right now, and you're presented with the opportunity to play Atlanta minus one or Philadelphia plus one, you're basically saying that Atlanta is a four or five point better team than Philadelphia tonight. Because Philadelphia's at home, where they should be getting three as a home field advantage, or even maybe more because last year in the, the, their home games they were nine and one, they're exceptional. So I'm not willing to say Atlanta is a four or five point better team than Philadelphia. I think it's ridiculous. And uh, I, I would be telling people to bet Philadelphia tonight and I know some of the Sharps that have not bet yet are going to do exactly that. And they're going to be doing it with large money. So we're going to see a playback on some of this stuff. And we may end up seeing Philadelphia close one or two point favorite. So that's what I would do. It's a money game. It's, it's like buying a stock. You, buy a, you don't buy a stock at 10 and sell it at 6. You, you do it in reverse. So it's, it's all we're doing here is playing with money. So, for me, my money would be on Philadelphia at this number. Earlier, at plus four, I was on Atlanta plus four. So, I hope that's, uh-huh. not, I hope that's not too confusing for people, but it's about winning money. It's not about picking, picking winners. It's a, let me tell you, uh, that's, uh, your thoughts are very enlightening, and uh, uh, I hope that people are paying attention because how you have addressed this line move and this issue uh, is absolutely 100% accurate, period. So, thank you. And, and, and your your opinions and, and comments are also very valid. And like I said, you've been red hot. You started the season off very well. I did not start the season off very well in the uh, colleges. I hit my first three, then I lost a bunch on Saturday, and then I won again with Virginia Tech. So I'm a little behind in the colleges, but... You know, that's the truth in advertising. You know, that that's the way it is. We're not going to win every day. But I've had uh, three of the, uh, two of the last three years in pro football, I've hit 63.4 and 63.6% in my my pro games. we got a big card on Sunday and Monday in the pros, and we also have a lot of college football games. And our remaining time, is there anything that you want to discuss? Yes, uh uh, I, I I have had uh, made some ob- observations in our opening week that uh, to me were rather shocking. I thought that uh, Miami and Florida State played as poorly as they could uh, in uh, uh, losing as favorites. Uh, and it, it's one of these things that uh, first I want to address the line. You know, we all have our ways of doing things and uh, how we handicap and evaluate and whatever. And the program that I use, my own personal program, uh, declared Virginia Tech uh, a comfortable winner in this game. And, of course, I'm not going to fight with bookmakers who buried me more than I'd like to admit. Uh, here's Florida State, a seven-and-a-half-point favorite, uh, and which to me made the plus seven-and-a-half of Virginia Tech like a gift from heaven. And one thing I think people have to understand, bookmakers are very, very good at what they do. But they can be wrong, too. And, you know, this was a place where I was confident I was jumping on the outright winner and uh, because I felt my numbers were better. So, you know, on some of these popular teams, such as Florida State, 
keep in mind uh, uh, they deserve a little bit of extra study because some of these teams are not as good as uh, uh, they have been or were. And I, as I say, I thought Miami and Florida State looked absolutely horrible. Oh, without a doubt. Um, I, I was on Virginia Tech as well. And it, was, it was a cakewalk. I didn't expect that. But then again, I didn't expect LSU to crush Miami either. Um, you know, there were just a lot of shocking results last week. Um, and, you know, Appalachian State almost took, uh, they, well, they took Penn State into overtime. And it just, teams were not, some of the teams were not ready to play. Even, even some of the underdogs that we think would come to, come to play, like the Troys of the world and stuff, they just didn't show up. Um, it, so it, it, the word to the wise there is, is in the beginning of any season, you know, be careful. Go slow. Don't don't expose yourself too much, because in, unless you have some kind of secret information that nobody knows about, you, you're really you're you're laying more than eleven to ten because <laughs> it's it's more of a crapshoot. It's more like throwing darts. So you just go slow early, as I'm going to be going slow in most of my plays in the pros this weekend as well. Although I do have a few. That I like, and um, you know, I'll be, I'll be, you know, putting some action in on those games and giving them out to my clients as well. So, uh, anything in the pros that that you know, this is the first week of the pros, as I said. And uh, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna test my figures in the pros pretty good uh, uh, on Sunday. I, I feel that. Uh, uh, Miami and Buffalo are two absolutely terrible teams. Now, looking at the numbers, will I uh, have the uh, uh, the wherewithal to jump in and and uh, bet against both of them? Uh, I haven't come to a lot of conclusions yet on Sunday's card. I'm still studying, but you know there are some attractive games in there, and I that that's where I would start. I'd use uh, uh, I'd go against Buffalo and Miami. I, I watched both of them in the preseason, and uh, I think what you saw is what you're going to get during the regular season, although maybe even less than that. So, you know, uh, I'll be in action in the NFL on Sunday for sure, uh, in a big way, but I'm going to do as you just suggested. I'm going to be very cautious. Yes, absolutely. Kelso, why don't you tell everybody again what you got going on this week and how they can get it? Okay, it's a big weekend for me. Uh, on Saturday, two underdogs that straight up with a 90% chance to win straight up, uh, releasing a two team 60 unit blowout parlay. My college game of the week, 75 units, and a wise guy shocker. And you can get all those games on the internet at kelsosportshandicapping.com or toll-free at 1-800-755-2255. Let's get together and win together. Absolutely, Kelso. Have a great weekend. Pick lots of winners, win a lot of money, and we'll talk again next week. Thank you, buddy. Looking forward to it. Thank Thank you. you.